people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India's turn as G20 president comes at a time when the world is fraught with challenges. From polarizing political battles to climate change to economic headwinds further widening the divide between the rich and the poor, people world over are confronted with a variety of problems. Experts and observers, however, believe that the timing of India's G20 presidency could not have been more fortuitous. How has India been able to withstand so many challenges plaguing other nations? Why are countries around the world turning to India for support against all forms of crisis? Join us as we explore how India's G20 presidency has the potential to solidify her place as a global leader. No G20 member has ever welcomed the presidency like India has when she illuminated hundreds of sites, including UNESCO World Heritage sites across the country on December 1st. Numerous other locations were also decorated with the G20 logo representing Vasudev Kutumbakam, or the world is one family. With the motto, one earth, one family, one future, India is prepared to bring the world together as she hosts around 200 G20 related events, including the Marquis Summit in September next year, under her year-long presidency. Leaders world over, including the US President Joe Biden, expressed their content and commitment towards addressing the pressing global issues in collaboration with and under the guidance of India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urged global leaders to unite in the fight against what he referred to as the primary challenges in the present circumstances. Climate change, terrorism, and pandemics. Many observers have commented that G20 members are placing their hope in India, for only she is in a position to steer the world out of a multi-pronged crisis. Whether it is India's democratic foundations that have held 1.4 billion people together for decades, her non-imperialistic foreign policy that has won her friends, allies, and trusted people world over, her prudent macroeconomic fundamentals which are keeping her afloat amidst recessionary global trends, or her assertive endeavors to bridge the divide between the global south and the rest of the world, India has positioned herself as a beacon of hope in these testing times. In an increasingly divisive world, where aggressive foreign policy and disagreements have taken the center stage, New Delhi provides an alternate, viable discourse, which talks about peace, progress, dialogue, and consensus. Indian External Affairs Minister, Dr. Jai Shankar, urge the global community to work together to achieve the common goals that the group pledged to accomplish during the summit in Bali last month. As the mother of democracy, India's G20 presidency will be consultative, it will be collaborative, and it will be decisive. India has an extensive and holistic agenda for its G20 presidency. From the depoliticization of the global supply chains which have affected supply of food and fertilizers, to pushing for sustainable solutions with regard to climate change. From making resources accessible to the most deprived and neglected, to negotiating a consensus between political polar opposites, India will endeavor to achieve to bring more unity to the world. India is increasingly being regarded as a true leader by the world community, for she has not only protected her own population, but has also committed herself to the global good in this rapidly changing geopolitical scene. There is a lot of crisis. There's geopolitics, 
there is a crisis of global debt, there's a crisis of climate finance, there is a crisis of global supply chain, uh, vast amount of challenges in the world, but I've always maintained that crisis is an opportunity and this is one of the greatest opportunities we've got uh, because we are putting together the agenda. The Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's interactions with the Chinese President Xi Jinping during the G20 summit last month was a precursor to what will follow under the Indian G20 presidency. The twin foundations of dialogue and diplomacy will be the motto going forward. The two sides, according to observers, are heading for a thaw following a deterioration in their bilateral ties as a result of the violent skirmish along the LAC in India's eastern Ladakh region in June of 2020, which left many people dead. India, which now stands on the cusp of massive industrialization, has vowed to reduce her carbon footprint significantly in the coming decades. India, which is set to become the world's most populated country, is also ensuring food supplies for others. Experts say that India possesses all the qualities required of a leader. Even if the G20 policy had not been rotational, many say that India would have deserved the chair in any event. Brand India is set to take center stage with hopes and expectations of billions around the world. Moving on, as FIFA World Cup temperature soars with the beginning of the knockout rounds, some very interesting stories that normally go unnoticed from the media attention have surfaced from around the world. Today we have brought a story from Pakistan, a country which hasn't qualified even once for the World Cup but hosts a huge populace of die-hard football fans. Such is the soccer craze in one such part near the port city of Karachi that it is known as Mini Brazil. Let's see how the World Cup fever has swept through this Pakistani neighborhood. Amidst fluttering flags of countries participating in the Football World Cup, young enthusiasts are sweating out for their own showpiece event in the dusty alleyway on the streets of Leari. Located in Pakistan, this neighborhood is called Mini Brazil, where excitement and the love for the game is palpable among soccer crazy people. Liari is one of the poorest neighborhoods in Pakistan port city of Karachi. But every four years, its narrow alleyways get plastered with the colors of Brazil, Spain and Portugal painted by the enthusiastic residents. Very expiration World Cup matches and uh, very powerful matches and Brazil match. I think my favorite team is Brazil. I like I like Brazil uh, team goalkeeper Ederson. It's my favorite goalkeeper. When Brazil played Switzerland in the preliminary round, thousands gathered in mini Brazil in front of large screens to watch their favorite team. When Brazil sealed their entry into the knockout stages with a 1-0 win over Switzerland, Pakistani fans erupted into wild cheers and dance. हमारे जितने भी ब्राज़ील लियारी के लोग हैं वो ब्राज़ील से मोहब्बत करते हैं लियारी में फुटबॉल बहुत अच्छा है लियारी के लोगों को फुटबॉल से बहुत चाहत है मोहब्बत है यहां हर 4 साल बाद इसी तरह एक रौनक लगती है और इसी तरह स्क्रीन लगती है और इसी तरह कई कई से लियारी एक छोटी आबादी नहीं है बहुत बड़ी आबादी है लियारी के अंदर कई कई लोग जो है ना ये मिनी ब्राज़ील का जाता है लियारी को The atmosphere turns ruckus with music playing and many turning out in the classic yellow and green jerseys of Brazil ever since the event kicked off. People have been closely following the progress of the World Cup and they are confident that their favorite team Brazil will lift the cup on 18 December, the day of the final. Moving on. 
India is emerging as a hub for technology and the numbers speak for themselves. Countries world over have also acknowledged the fact that India is a tech force to be reckoned with. In the recently held Global Technology Summit, leaders from around the world praised India for its successful strides in the field. A state-backed conducive atmosphere has allowed India to emerge as the vanguard of innovation and technology. India's startup ecosystem too is witnessing rapid growth thanks to the country's continued growth in the tech industry. India's embrace of technology has paid off in many ways. Citizens are empowered, governments less burdened, and businesses are free of excessive bureaucratic red tape. The adoption of technology enabled nearly the entire Indian population to possess a digital ID and that a large portion of the country's population be connected to the financial and banking systems. India's technological skill, as evidenced by the Arogya Setu and Cohen apps, also allowed her to manage the COVID crisis much more efficiently than what would have been otherwise. Today, India is dubbed as a hub for global engineering talent and as a feeder school of tech leaders throughout the world. It is because of Indians' passion for technology that the country has been at the helm of affairs of major global tech companies around the world in recent years. From Google CEO Sundar Pichai to Microsoft's Executive Chairman and CEO Satya Nadella to MasterCard's former CEO Ajay Banga, Indians have been leading tech industries around the world. Bengaluru is the fastest growing tech hub in the world, even ahead of London. Companies world over are relying on India to take forward their tech-based research and development. Even the most advanced economies have reached out for Indian assistance when it has come to tech-based support and employment. The UK is India's second largest research partner across 200 projects, 175 institutions and 100 companies. And now we are increasing research and development funding to £20 billion by 2025. We expect £1.5 billion of digital services to India, and India's tech giants like Tata and Infosys support over 30,000 UK jobs. We're already working together in so many ways to mobilise technology in our shared struggle against disease and against climate change. Many say that data is the new oil. Therefore, it appears that technology is going to play a key role in all forms of future advancements and negotiations. People and countries with advanced technology and systems will find themselves better positioned in the years to come. The Indian Foreign Minister recently said that the rise of India was deeply linked with the rise of Indian technology, and the country had woken up to key questions regarding the processing and harvesting of its data. Technology, he said, was going to be a decisive factor in the future and that the global geopolitics will be driven by technology. Countries with superior technology will have an edge over those with inferior or no technology at all. We have to stop pretending that there's something neutral about technology. Technology is no more neutral than economics or uh, any other activity and uh, you know uh, we very you know you may speak about uh, whether it is data or uh, uh, oil or oil as you know uh, data as the new oil the fact is more and more things are technologically driven and we need to understand that there's a very strong political connotation which is inbuilt really uh, into into technology A state-backed atmosphere has allowed India to emerge as the vanguard of innovation and technology. India's startup ecosystem is also witnessing rapid growth, thanks to the country's continued growth in the tech industry. As per NASCOM, an advocacy group, India is the third largest startup ecosystem in the world. 
The government has endeavored to encourage and support the tech industry in all forms possible and has invested more than 1 billion USD in the past one decade, in addition to attracting foreign players to join the Indian tech industry. India, already a global leader in a number of fields, is fast emerging as a prominent force in the tech industry, which will continue to boost Brand India worldwide. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Protests are not seen to be dying down in Iran despite the authorities' call to shut down the morality police, which enforced women to dress and behave modestly in the Islamic country. Latest videos showed students chanting, Don't be afraid, we are all together, and down with the whole regime. Iran has been rocked by nationwide unrest following the death of Iranian Kurdish woman Mahasa Amini on September 16 in police custody, posing one of the strongest challenges to the Islamic Republic since the 1979 revolution. Amini was arrested by Iran's morality police for flouting the strict hijab policy. Last week, protesters in Iran called for a three-day strike this week, stepping up pressure on authorities. Iranian shops shut their doors in several cities following calls for the nationwide general strike. Hundreds of people have been killed in the unrest since the death of Amini, a 22-year-old woman who was detained by the morality police for flouting hijab rules. Tokyo Metropolitan Government in Japan has been operating a new subway train on the Mita Line since May. The Mita Line runs from north to south in Tokyo. A number of locals commute on the local trains every day and the number of commuters is constantly increasing year by year. The train currently has only six cars that were launched around 30 years ago. In order to fulfill the increasing numbers of passengers and ensure comfortable transportation, the Tokyo Metropolitan Department has decided to launch a eight-car subway train with modern design and facilities. The new subway train is designed based on policies of convenience, hospitality and safety. をですね、あの、ガラスを多く使っておりまして、あの、明るい車内をですね、あの、ま、再現してございます。従来の手すりとは違いまして、縦に手すりが入っておございまして、小さいお子様もですね、捕まりやすい。高齢者の方がですね、
which is a solution to making a better impact on the environment, society and economy by transforming its business. Fujitsu contributed to the world's first 3D sensing AI technology in sports and developed a gymnastic scoring system in collaboration with the International Gymnastic Federation. Fujitsu uses these technologies for well-being. The Aftar in the mirror serves the customer. AGC has developed a technology that can express Aftars and various video contents using a special mirror. AGC is one of the world's largest glass manufacturers and is known as a producer of materials, new products that mix materials using the latest technology such as glass for 5G antennas. These products that are being developed with the help of the latest technologies are improving the lives of people and are helpful in solving all kinds of social problems. Moving on. The magnificence of the annual International Sand Art Festival was witnessed in the eastern state of Odisha as scores of sculptors gathered at Chandrabaga Beach in Konark to showcase their skills and talent. Held in the backdrop of India assuming the G20 chair, major art pieces were centered on India's push for peace and brotherhood under its leadership. Have a look. People from all walks of life visited Konak in Odisha to witness and appreciate Send Art as the city hosted the annual International Send Art Festival last week. A fascinating blend of art and passion is poured on Odisha's seashore every year and thousands turn up to appreciate and celebrate the event. While some praised the art's granular details, others were overawed by the grandeur of the event. Mamta Batra from the capital city of Delhi said she had never seen something of this sort and was delightfully surprised after knowing that the event was an international affair and artists from across the world participated in it. हमें दिल्ली में बैठे हुए भी ये इस चीज़ का आइडिया नहीं था कि ये सैंड फेस्टिवल इंटरनेशनली यहाँ पर ऑर्गेनाइज होता है हमें ये इम्प्रेशन था कि सिर्फ इंडिया के ही या उड़ीसा के लोकल लोग ही इसमें पार्टिसिपेट करते हैं बट यहाँ के जब मैंने देखा कनाडा रशिया जापान सिंगापुर जैसी सिटीज से पार्टिसिपेंट्स आए हैं और बड़े एंथुजियाज से वो सैंड आर्ट कर रहे हैं तो मुझे देख के बहुत खुशी हुई Organized every year under aegis of state government of Odisha, the year's festival kicked off on December 1 and culminated amidst cheer and adulation on 5th of December. Famous artists from a host of countries including Mexico, Spain, Singapore, France, Norway, Germany, the Netherlands and the United States showed their artwork. This is my fourth year in this uh, Sand Art Festival and every year is getting uh, improving, getting better. The setup is getting uh, better uh, than before. I was inspired by the nature and I created something, a piece of my artwork uh, inspired by the nature. Sudarshan Patnayak, India's most renowned and celebrated sand artist, sculpted the G20 logo during the festival. After debuting in 2015, the event's popularity has grown multifold since then. The aim of the festival is to highlight global issues through sand art. Artists from different countries have also contributed to its immense success. The International Sand Art Festival was part of the Konark Dance Festival that was held concurrently in the state. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.
people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.